Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today I am very delighted to interview uh, Rafal Gendars. Uh, he is here in Berlin. He's the first astrologer, I guess, whom I am, uh, who is in Germany and I'm interviewing him uh, here. Although we planned to meet uh, last year, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. Ho hopefully when the planets agree, then we will meet in the future. But today he is here for the first time in Exotic Astrology and Namaste sir and welcome, uh, great to have you. And today he is going to enlighten us about uh, psychology uh, and how to use psychology. Uh, so he has this presentation today of 2021 slides where he will first, uh, in the first part he will uh, explain about you know, like uh, psychology and uh, psychothera physiotherapy, psychology and all the some example charts and then in the later, char later part of the presentation he will explain uh, a bit about uh, different combinations uh, which could lead to you know psychological disorders or, or some other examples and some remedies also okay. So welcome, sir. Great to have you here and uh, the stage is all yours. Please kindly introduce yourself because this is the first time you are here. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you, Babajit, for your uh, kind uh, invitation to your uh, exotic channel, which is uh, quite popular. I'm very happy to be here. And hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Rafał Gendas. I'm originally coming from Poland. I'm living now in Berlin, Germany. Uh, I uh, become interested in astrology in early years, but in around 2004, I get in touch with uh, Sri Jagannath Center Parampara, which is around Sanjay Rat. And then um, I was uh, writing there on the forum and trying to get grip what's going on there. And uh, finally, um, I had a very good vibe, very good contact with uh, Visti Larsen Pandit, who is now the uh, main person for a Jaimini Sutra, and therefore I started learning from uh, Visti Larsen in around um, 2004. Then in 2011, I, I came to Berlin, to Germany. I al also graduated in philosophy studies in 2007. I did master's in philosophy. So I try to connect also philosophy and also now I'm also interested in psychology. So all these topics of philosophy, of psychology and astrology, they, I try to find the best and always try to find the common, common things. Um, now uh, in Poland, we are opening the school uh, of astrology, which will be connected to uh, academia. So this is the first time probably in Europe where the Vedic astrology will be taught in the official academia format. So that is something very new. I will be author of that course and we are doing that with uh, three friends. And this is also a precedence when it comes to astrology in, uh, in Europe. So that is also a very nice thing to have. Beautiful. Also, I want to mention that on my YouTube, I'm also uh, uh, doing now weekly live. I try to do a free readings chart. So if you want to see that, then you may be, uh, you may uh, also subscribe to the YouTube channel to get that. Yes, uh, yes. He, he has a YouTube channel and you also have an Instagram page and uh, I will give the link in the description section and you also do consultations. So that's great. all, that's all great. the information you will find down below. If you are interested, then please go and have a look at his channel. Okay, great. <laughs> that's great. I think we can go to the slides now, right, yes, Babaji? Definitely. Okay, let me now uh, try to share. Mm -hmm. One second, I have some. Where is that now? One second. Now this, okay. There you go. Yeah. So this is our topic for today. This will be um, uh, psychology in Vedic astrology. And um, uh, we will try to go through some basic concepts of how to see the, uh, these topics in astrology. Uh, and as Babajit already made a nice introduction, this will have two parts. One part will be about the charts of psychotherapists itself. So we will see how these people, what karma they have, what they are exactly doing. Do they work with the mind? How to see 
maybe this will be important for people who consider going to the psycho uh, psychology studies if they have this proper karma to go there and in the second part we will go through the actual uh, mental challenges and i grouped few of the problems uh, to planets and then we can uh, it can become more approachable and more practical how we can see those in our own charts okay so let's go <laughs> the first thing here uh, which i want to mention is about the uh, the general the branch of psychology is what we can call it is this is the medicine of the mind so generally, if we study the medicine, the main karaka for a bishak, for a physician, uh, how it is said in the Jaimini Sutra, is Mercury. Now, depending on which planets have to do with Mercury, then this will define what kind of physician that is. If that is Mars and Mercury, this can give more sojourn. If it is Venus, it can go give person who is doing with pharmaceutics, with chemicals, and so on. So Mercury and the moon will give us the psychology, psychologist, someone who is doing, who is trying to heal our, now depending on philosophy, we can say brain, we can say mind, right? Depending what you believe. And astrology is more about Agni. Here I have written, Agni is a fire. So it is sun and Mars. So you need to have, strong fire to be astrologer they say okay the whole uh, branch of astrology is basically loaded by uh, grishmaritu which is the summer so this is sun and mars and sun and mars are having directional strength in the tent house the digbala in the tent house tent house have to do with sight so you need to have proper sight because it's nine from the second in second we have eyes ninth house is the function so the function of the eyes is the site which is in the tent house, right? So we need that site. We need also a Jupiter because Jupiter is showing that higher knowledge being the Karaka of the ninth house. And uh, of course, we also need the nodes, nodes of the moon, Rahu and Ketu to transcend, right? Because the Jyotisha, the astrology means that I am seeing either into the future or into the past. So I am transcending something and to transcend to being able to see in the future we need to have rahu and ketu so this is also the difference between psychology you can see the branch of psychology is here on the top it's more about mercury and moon so in if if in if you are astrologer and you have strong mercury and strong moon in your chart then you will have very much psychological approach to astrology. You will like basically to heal people. You will talk a lot about self-love, self-care, how to be nice to yourself, how to be forgiving. All this, this blend will be very much of psychologists. It's all right. But if you have more Agni, Jupiter nodes, if you have these planets more strong in your chart, you will be more interested in Jyotish, in events, in determinism, you will have more likely this maybe a little bit religious approach, maybe more metaphysical approach, maybe a little bit religious approach. So this is the difference, right? Also, you can see that in your chart and you can also um, decide in which direction you can come. I can speak for myself. I have both things in my chart. I have in Navamsha, which is showing your abilities and, and your nature, I have Sun in first house, Jupiter in fifth house, and Ketu in ninth house. So this is more the astrological combination which gives me this astrological field. But in my Rasi chart, in my main chart, I am the Gemini Lagna, you see the green, <laughs> the green shirt, <laughs> and Mercury is in Cancer Navamsha. So this Mercury and Moon connection is there. Therefore, I'm interested in psychology, but my main abilities, we could say, or my main skill <laughs> is the astrology. So this is these two branches. These are the planets which are ruling these uh, two areas. Okay, so let's go uh, now. Uh, we will now define uh, which elements we are taking into consideration when we are analyzing the chart of psychotherapist. What has to be there? what is what uh, where we have to look 
where we have to look, which plans to take, which houses to take, which Vargas to take. We, we must have some plan. We must have some set of rules okay. first. And then we will be seeing a few examples, three or four examples, uh, and we will analyze how this is going on. Okay, so as we said before, this Mercury and Moon, this is the central things when it comes to a blessing of God, because the Karaka, the planet, is the blessing of God. It's the, the Karaka is the fruit. So we need to have Mercury and Moon, then it means that we, have, we can cure the mind. These are the planets. And then we also need the Aruda Lagna. Aruda Lagna is a point in the chart which describes your uh, sector, how you are perceived by other people, to which sector you are belonging. And this Aruda Lagna would be nice <laughs> if it has also a connection to Mercury and Moon. Then only you can be a doctor, you can be publisher, you can be a writer, you can be a person who is um, analyzing and uh, trying to heal the mind. So Mercury and Moon connected to Aruda Lagna. Now, if it's your ability, then in Navamsha this will be visible. If, if you have really ability to heal people, because you need to have not only, uh, it, it, it's not only your passion, but also your ability so this ability is Navamsha. But to be your work, you need to connection to Dashamsa, to the chart of work. So this is basically Mercury and Moon. This is our basic thing. And then we are seeing which points of the chart this yoga is touching. It's having yoga with, the Sambanda with, the connection. So this is, the, this is the basic thing which we will analyze today. I think it's quite basic, but it's very, um, it's central attributes of doctors, of therapists. And this is, this must be there. If you don't have that, you will probably don't have this fate to be psychotherapist. So this is the, the basic. Additionally, you will see this three more here things, which we also need to uh, analyze now to see more what kind of therapist you are. No? So in the Navamsha, fourth house has to do with therapy. I don't, I don't know if you knew it. No? So fourth in Navamsha is therapy, curing, healing someone. Seven house have to do with research. Okay, this is also maybe something new. So seven in Navamsha, if you have their planets, you may be a researcher. If it's in the fourth house, you are more therapeutic person. This is also very nice to use for all type of consultants, physicians, psychotherapists, even if you are astrologer, right? There are also many types of astrologers. Some people are doing the research, seven house, Rahu people, and so on. Some people are doing more healing, fourth house remedies. If the fourth house is strong in your Navamsha, it's very good for you to do remedies. You can be very good in mantra. You can be very good uh, in helping people. Uh, so the fourth house has this therapeutic motherly moon uh, factor. Now, um, fifth lord in Rashi chart. This is the second point, which is very important. Fifth lord, probably you know, has to do with knowledge, right? Fifth house is knowledge. So for astrologer, we know that to be a good astrologer, you need to have fourth Lord connected to sun or 12th house. Like in my chart, I have tw uh, fifth Lord Venus. Venus is with sun and Venus is a 12th Lord, right? In Sanjay Rat, Sanjay Rat has 12th Lord moon in the fifth house, right? So all uh, Visti Larsen, my guru, fifth Lord in the 12th house. So it's always connected to the 12th house then you are working with Grishma Ritu branch, which is Jyotish. But I suspect that for a doctor, to be Ayurvedic doctor, to be a physician, Western or, or alternative or any type of physician, also there must be some yoga for physician, which is related to the fifth Lord, right? And I have seen that in the charts, which, we, which I have here, which I analyzed, I see that there is some connection to six and eight, which are diseases, roga. Six is Roga disease, ninth house is also, eight house is also Roga. So the psychotherapist has the knowledge of disease. Fifth Lord's connected to six or eight. And then 10th Lord, because 10th Lord will show uh, with, with what you are working, 
right? If 10th Lord is connected to ninth house, you may work in universities, right? If 10th Lord is connected to seventh house, you may work one-to-one, -one, client one-to-one, -one, right? If 10th Lord is in the fifth house, you may teach someone, you may teach students, right? So the 10th Lord will show uh, the way you are working with, how you are, uh, how you are really working. Not, not so much what you are doing in life when it comes to uh, deciding your title. Like if you are an astrologer, physician, computer scientist, engineer, it will be very hard to say from the tent lord. It's better to see then tent from the moon. But general how you work, this tent lord from ascendant, from lagnam, will be very good. So I think uh, we don't need to repeat that. These are the points which we will analyze in our examples. Okay, so the first example, this is the guy, which is um, Michael Bailey. And he's basically um, working as a psychotherapist and uh, he is working in the field of sexual orientation, okay? And he is basically stating that your physical, his main proposal, his main, we could say, um, main thesis, his main point, uh, because of which he gained on one hand a lot of reputation, but also on the other hand, some kinds of conflicts with people, scandals, because it was not always politically correct. The point was, he was saying, is that the sex you have, the orientation, if you are homosexual, if you are bisexual, is basically coming from your genetical approach, I mean, genetical code. So it's genetic, genetically pre predetermined if you are homosexual or you are not homosexual and so on. And as we can uh, think about the consequences, it has some problem with the trans people, with people who are changing the sex, right? So he had, on one hand, he had a lot of support from homosexual <laughs> uh, agenda, but a lot of problems from transsexual. But basically, he, was, he is a very famous psychologist. We can see it here. Psychologist, behavioral genetist, professor of Northern University, best known for his work on the etiology of sexual orientation, and so on. So he's basically working as a professor on university. Hmm? Okay, all right. So uh, first of all, and here are a few points which I want you to uh, take, um, to focus on. We, what are the points which are showing that? So first of all, we will see that in his 10th um, Lord from Rasi chart, so he is Scorpio Lagna. Uh, here you have Diamond chart, North Indian chart. Here we have South Indian chart. So I think for both people, it's, <laughs> it's fine. So 10th Lord is, 10th house is Leo and the sun, which is related to a uh, way of work, what you are doing is in the eighth house. So in the house of diseases with the Karaka of physician, Mercury in sign of Gemini, okay? So this is something, mm, okay. This could be also a person who is working, I must say that this could be also a person who is working as economist because Mercury also can show economic. And in eighth house, this may show loans or other people, money, resources. So this could be also a person who is working with economy, right? Okay, uh, so these two options we have. Then we see that tent from the moon, the moon is in tent house in Leo. Now tent from the moon, this, is, this, will show, um, this will show basically the career life, is a Venus on one hand, you see the seven house. Tent from moon is seven house. And the seven house is Venus with the Mars. Oh my God, this is the Bacchus Trioga, many relationship, right? But because in his case, this is a ninth house in the house of knowledge, this will be knowledge about sexual things, right? So 10th from the moon is a seventh house, which is showing sexual orientation and all that. This is in the ninth house of knowledge, science, subjects. And this is these Venus and Mars yoga, Bahus Tri yoga, sexual yoga, which gives many partnership normally. Now the Shastra says Venus and Mars, many partners. Bahu is three. Bahu is many, three is spouses, right? So Venus and Mars in ninth house. Um, because 10 from the moon is also Taurus. So Taurus, I don't know if you know that, but 
some of you probably know that Mula Tricona for Vrisha Rasi for Taurus is the moon. So the other Lord of Taurus is also e, the moon. So now we have the moon also in the 10th house and the moon here gives the, uh, the, um, the psychology and healing and all that. And also this Venus and Mars here, this Bahus Yoga is in Cancer. So we can say that this is also related to a medical point of view, right? So that is the Rasi chart. That is important in the Rasi chart. In the Navamsa chart, we have in the 10th house here, um, no, this is this is 10th house is here, right? <laughs> this is the other. Uh, so in the 10th house here, we have Mercury, which is the 10th Lord, aspected by the moon. So the yoga moon and Mercury are there. And the 10th Lord Mercury of a physician is in the sixth house also, and in the house of Saturn. So Saturn is the Karaka of diseases. So we will have also a strong connection in the Navamsa chart to the Saturn, because Saturn also shows remedies and therapies and so on. So we have 10th Lord Mercury of physician in Saturnian sign Aquarius and in sixth house also. And the moon is aspecting that Gemini here in the tent. So the moon, which is showing the, uh, the healing and all that is aspecting the mercurial sign Gemini. So we have everything. We have moon connected to Mercury in the 10th house here. And the Mercury, the Lord is in the Saturnian sign here. And Jupiter, this is very important because the Trikona is showing your nature, how you are doing that. How is your nature, what you like? So here we have Jupiter and Rahu in the fifth and ninth. Wow, this gives very intellectual person, right? If you have Jupiter in the Navamsha and Trikona, you are very intellectual, you are very intelligent. Many branches, they say, right? If the, Vena, if the Jupiter is in first, fifth, and nine in the Vamsha, person will have knowledge of many branches. And the Rahu is in the ninth, which is giving the research because Rahu is the researcher, right? Now the Rahu is in Taurus and Taurus has to do with genetics because Taurus is the natural sign of families. It's the second house. So he's doing research related to biology, related to genetics, and this is about the Mercury 10th house is about the science. So everything is there. Uh, I will skip now the analysis of the Shamsa. You can see Mercury is in the third as a 10th Lord, which gives writer. He uh, has written many books. So now this is uh, the Shamsa will say how all this will exactly manifest in the work, right? Will he be a researcher? Will he be a writer? Will he be a professor? Because as a psychologist, you can have many, many type of Create life. Right? So that the Shamsa will show. But the general karma in the Rasi and Navamsha is here. So that was example one. Here I have written some Vimshotri events. You can analyze. Yeah. So that was my, Michael Bailey. The next is Andri Borginon. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Probably pronou I pronounced that uh, wrongly. And what I want to uh, show here, again, this yoga of Mercury and Moon, because that is our focus. We are seeing Mercury and Moon yoga, right? And here in this chart, we have uh, this Andre. He was a French physician, psychiatrist, and psychoanalytist known for his work in France, right? So um, here we have Mercury as a Lagna Lord, right? He's Gemini Lagna, and Buddha is... Lagna Lord, Ascendant Lord in Cancer sign. Oh my God, nice. In the second house, right? So we can say that he will be working in groups because second house has to do with family, with the groups, right? So maybe a group therapy will be important. Maybe something with food. Maybe he will connect dietetics also to, um, to psychology. Second house also have to do with family and this is a cancer. This may show maybe uh, pediatrics, working with the children and so on. So based on that, the second house will be pronounced in his life. And the Aruda Lagna now, uh, Aruda Lagna is in the third house in Leo and the Lord of Leo is Sun connected to that Mercury in Cancer. So we have connection of Aruda, which is showing your sector in work, to Mercury and Sun, which gives us the, um, the physician. Huh? The Navamsha here is um, very uh, interesting. <laughs> we also need that Moon and Mercury. We are looking for that Moon and Mercury 
and also the fourth house, right? To cure for a therapy. So we see that 10th Lord here in Navamsha is uh, Venus. Here is Libra, right? 10th Lord, here we have seven, is Libra. Lord of Libra is a Venus in the fourth house. No? So on the first glance, we see, oh, there is no connection of Moon and Mercury, right? It's like Mars, Venus, Jupiter. Normally, this would give wealth from properties, maybe from cars, right? Venus in the fourth, cars. Okay. Mars in fourth, maybe properties, right? Jupiter is there, maybe some kind of school, something like that. But... <laughs> Uh, there is a yoga which is called Trikona Yoga. It's very interesting. This is when the planets in the fifth and ninth, when you have a planet in the fifth and ninth, then it is like having those planets in the sign itself, right? Also, this is quite a rare yoga, but I want to bring that, that it's not always so obvious <laughs> to find that, but it will be there. So here we have moon, you see, in the fifth from that, which is a Trikona. <laughs> And Mercury is in the ninth from that. So this yoga of moon and Mercury, wow. This is coming back to the fourth house, to the therapy. And this is with the 10th Lord. So 10th Lord is in the fourth house, therapy. But uh, therapy in what? Moon and Mercury are having yoga on that fourth house. So this has to do with uh, being the psychologist. So that was the uh, exact uh, exact example of uh, this. Here we also see that he has a Venus Jupiter in the third house. That is very good. This gives Dviguru Yoga, which is the blessings of left and right hemisphere of the brain. You are analytical, but also very creative, right? So this is, this is all there. Okay, the next example, I think that will be the, uh, the third one, yeah. This was American clinical psychologist who earned PhD in Indiana University. She was the first Latina to receive a doctorate degree in psychology in US. She helped with the treatment and assessment of children with behavioral problems. She also led in a way with diversity in psychology with a scholarship program. So she was very much connected to a scholarship programs, to a courses, right? And yoga for that is moon and Venus. Okay, in the fourth. The Jaimini says, if you have moon and Venus in fourth, you will do a lot of courses. <laughs> you will do a lot of trainings. Okay, this is maybe also something new for you. So this moon and Venus in the fourth house. Oh, this is, this is Digbala. Moon and Venus have directional strength in the fourth house. In the Jala Kendra, watery Kendra. Okay, so that's, that is the part of the courses. And also we see that uh, which things we have to analyze here is the 10th um, Lord here again. You see 10th Lord of Creed Life is in sixth house again. In previous examples, it was in eight with the sun, remember? Now the 10th Lord is sun in the sixth house with Mercury again. So again, diseases, the house of diseases of Roga is there. And the Mercury is Karaka there. Eh? So that is there. Then we see that in the Navamsha. Ah, let's see the fifth Lord also, because we said that the fifth Lord has to do with knowledge. So the fifth Lord here, the fifth house is Pisces with the Rahu, which can give a person who has many, many... Uh, if Rahu is in the fifth house, you have many ideas, many, many ideas you will have. It's good for research also. So the fifth Lord here is in the eighth house, right? So this can also give a researcher, a person who is going very, very deep in the knowledge because eight house has to, is like a Scorpio. Eight house is like a big well where you can jump and go deep, 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 deep. So you can investigate, you can be histor historian, you can be a person who is into archeology, span into uh, diving deep into subject. No? So this is uh, eight house. Um, it is a little bit problematic when the moon is there because it, it's the moon is debilitated in Scorpio, but for the fifth Lord, especially if it's Jupiter, like Satvik Grahas, this can give very deep knowledge. So if it's sun or Jupiter blessing, then it can give a very big. And eight house has to do with diseases, right? So we also have a knowledge of diseases and working with the diseases itself. Okay, that is there, that is nice. And in the Navamsha, the 10th Lord, right? This is what? This is Sagittarius Navamsha, right? Right. Sagittarius Navamsha. And what we need? 
Mercury and Moon again, right? So 10th house, Mercury, Moon, aspecting. Yes. From the fourth, again from the fourth, right? So we see a pattern. There is a nice pattern. We see that in the Rasi chart, six and eight are pronounced, these houses of Roga. They are related to the knowledge, which is the fifth house or 10th house, which is related to work. You are working with the knowledge. And in the Navamsha, we have the pattern of Mercury and Moon and from the fourth house of therapy. And here we see that this is even with Jupiter. So this is bringing this academical blend, this teaching blend, you are teaching, you are authority. This Jupiter will bring those uh, blessings also in the chart. Huh? So this Mercury and Moon yoga is there. Huh? So this was the Martha, Martha Bernal. Huh? She was working with multiculturalism a lot, right? So also when the 10th Lord is in the sixth house, especially Mercury, it can also give a lot of um, enemies, enemies, conflicts. So other people may uh, have some problems with, with Martha and her, and her therapy. Okay, this is the last example, but very interesting guy because he is innovator. He is like starting new school, completely new school is started here. And this is my Rolo. And uh, he was an American psychoanalyst, lecturer, who was successful and popular pioneer of existential psychology. He authored a dozen of books, including Love and Will, Meaning of Anxiety, and Power and Innocence. Okay? So um, in his chart, we see that the third house here has this Mercury and Moon yoga. Uh, so the yoga is there again, Mercury and Moon. Uh, this is interesting when you see the, the Freud chart, the most, if we, if we say psycho, psychology, psychotherapy, then the, the first person probably which comes to our mind is, uh, is the uh, Freud. And Freud in his 10th house of work, he has also Mercury and Moon. <laughs> this is also very interesting. No? So here we see Venus, Mercury, Moon, and the Sun. Oh my God, in the third house. This can give many brothers also, many siblings, because third house has to do with siblings. So if you have many planets in third, 11, many siblings, many planets in fifth, many children, many students, many planets in seventh, many spouses, right? So he has many planets in third house, so many writings, many books, right? He has written many, many books. And uh, this is also Aruda is here. So Aruda Lagna is also in the third house because this is Aquarius. Lagna Lord in the second house. So the Aruda will jump to the third house. And here we have Venus, Mercury, and Moon. So he will be known from that. If you have Mercury with the Aruda Lagna, you will be known from writing. You will be known from speaking, right? So YouTubers or people who are speaking a lot, people who are like you, Babaji, no? you also should have some Mercury related to the Aruda Lagna or at least Jupiter. No? So you are well known from speaking, well known from teaching and so on. So he has that very, uh, Venus, Mercury and Moon. And again, see the fifth Lord. Mercury is the fifth Lord. And for uh, Aquarius Lagna, fifth and eight are the same Lordship of Mercury. So it is like with the eight. No? So the Aquarius people, they will naturally have knowledge about eight house. Hmm? Therefore, this is philosophical sign because fifth and eight are the same house. And uh, this is with the sixth Lord Moon. You see that for Aquarius, Moon is the sixth Lord. Here's the Moon. And this is joining the fifth Lord. So again, Mercury and Moon, Knowledge about disease. This is also Sankha Yoga, according to Parashara. When fifth and sixth are together, person is Sankha Yoga, which means he inv invents something new. Eh? And he was the pioneer of existential psychology. So he started something new because of that connection of fifth and sixth. Sankha Yoga, like Krishna blowing the Sankha, right? He is the, uh, when you blow the Sankha, it means something new is starting. So this is the yoga. This is the yoga. And the 11 from Aruda Lagna shows uh, what is your target group? <laughs> uh, uh, who will be giving you money, basically, we could say, right? Where are your gains? This is 11 from Aruda Lagna. And here we see the Saturn. So people who are ill, right? So person who is like astrologer or psychotherapist, 
normally they have in 11 from Aruda Lagna, they have either Moon or Saturn because people who are suffering are coming to you. Hmm? If you are astrologer and you don't have that, you will probably not help people. You can, for example, then uh, teach another astrologers, right? You can write a book about astrology and you can teach or uh, tutor, uh, give a guidance to other astrologers who will then be um, uh, like a therapist, right? So that depends what is in your 11 from Aruda Lagna. In 11 from Aruda Lagna, you have Moon and Saturn, then the masses are coming to you, right? People who are suffering. So then you are um, uh, curing people, healing people, right? If you have that, like for, for example, in my chart, I have Ele uh, Aruda Lagna, uh, Virgo with Mercury exalted, and 11 from Aruda Lagna, I have Cancer, which is the moon. Okay. And the moon is in Capricorn. So people who are suffering, they are coming to me, right? So if, if astrologer have that, then it means that he can heal. But if there would be, for example, Jupiter or Ketu, then it means that you can, um, you can be then work with, uh, with uh, giving expertise to other astrologers. No? They are also astrologers like that. They are not uh, like uh, consulting, helping people, but they are more writing a books, doing a research, making a software, right? They are basically helping other astrologers to be better and better, to increase the quality. And, uh, I had one question here regarding this. Uh, have you seen if Moon, Mercury are like uh, in Parivartan Yoga, exchanging houses, uh, signs, even in that case, have you seen this working? Uh, of course, provided the other factors are uh, linking with that. Yes, yes. In fact, I have that yoga in Navamsha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and this is uh, my Lagna Lord from Rashi is Mercury. And he is in Cancer, Navamsha. And the moon from Navamsha and Mercury from Navamsha is in Cancer. Yes. And moon is in the Gemini. So okay. there is the Parivartana exchange. Mm -hmm. Yes. Parivartana is the uh, strongest type of yoga. It has hundred. If, if you learn about yoga, then the correct. Parivartana is number one. It's like 100% yoga, no? Correct, it's correct. the strongest one. Then UT is 75%. Then Drishti is 50%, right? Then the Karaka Drishti is uh, 25%. So these are these four yogas and this Parivartana is very strong connection. And this will be very important. This will be very interesting because there will be the dynamics between the two houses. No? So these two houses then will have vital role in that. Uh, in that psychotherapist life. Yeah, so definitely. Okay, so this, these were the therapist uh, part, okay? Now, um, I want to, now what I will, so this, what, whatever I said to this point, <laughs> it was the parampara view, so I only um, uh, repeated, <laughs> I only uh, said what I, what, uh, I, I know about uh, these things. Now I want to um, show you something which I um, invented or I, I made a research about few planets, how we can assign them to a um, few disorders, right? This is, of course, open thing, maybe for your discussion. And this is also, uh, you may also think how to improve that. If you will have any, uh, if you will not agree, you can write in the comment section probably uh, what is your suggestion or, uh, or anything like that, yeah. So basically, there was a guy <laughs> there was a guy, David Burns, and uh, he is a person who started also new type of psychology, which is called cognitive psychology. Right, new type, completely new type. He, of course, was uh, starting from psychology type, which is called uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, which is I think now most popular type of astrology, especially in the Western, like Germany, in Germany, the cognitive behavioral therapy is the very important one. But he started something new and he started this cognitive astrology, uh, psychology. <laughs> what this means, basically the, the main theory about this is that 
every uh, problem, every mental problem you have is, co is coming from wrong thinking. This is, this is everything, <laughs> okay? Your feelings, your depression, your anxiety, your uh, every, every mental challenge is basically coming from irrational thoughts you have. You have some type of irrational thinking in your head which is bringing you this problem. So I've read that book, Feeling Good. It's a bestseller. It's, it's really, it's a classic on, in psychology. <laughs> so if you, if you want, you can also get that book. It's, it's really, not only it will give you a knowledge, but it's also very therapeutic. You can, it's like a book therapy. If you have any issues, then this book will help you tremendously. It's, it's really, it's really great. Uh, so I, I, I took the, the main, uh, main cognitive disorders, main cognitive disorders he is uh, writing there, he wrote about, and I tried to ascribe <laughs> those wrong thoughts, wrong thinking patterns to planets. This was my idea, because when we do that, when we do that successfully, when we would be able to properly ascribe these wrongful, this, this bad habits, these bad patterns to the planets, you can imagine how much help this would bring for diagnosis, for remedies, right? We can then see the chart. We can work together, astrology and psychology. I know few uh, astrologers who are working with psychologists together, okay? Like, for example, uh, probably you know Freedom Cole. He's also an important student of Sanjay Rat. He's uh, living in California. And he's an astrologer, but he is also co-working with psychologists. Yeah, I think even yeah. Dennis, Dennis Harness also, I think. I'm not yeah. sure, but I've heard. Yes. So... Uh, some psychologists which are open to this uh, astrology, which are also uh, open to this, uh, uh, to bringing together these two very similar branches, they can work together. Uh, so he is basically, uh, let me see. Aha, maybe let's do this first. This is basically the list. This is the list of errors. <laughs> this is the list of errors we are doing, which is making us depressed, which okay. is making us anxious, which oh. is bringing all the, all the problems, all the mess, okay? All the mess <laughs> is coming from, according to this guy, is coming from these things. No? So first is all or nothing. Thinking, all or nothing. Like, for example, oh my God, uh, someone has dumped me. Okay, someone broken with me. It's like catastrophe. It's like end of the world. Okay, or for example, I failed to, uh, I failed to um, pass some exam. Everything is no matter what. No? So, for example, we are exercising in gratitude. The gratitude is like a very good exercise, which is in the other periphery to that, right? Because we can say, okay, maybe I didn't succeed in that, this and that, but I have a good family, I have a health, I have a good job, I have good friends, right? Social support is there. So every one of us has some good points or bad points. It's, it's never all or nothing. So this all or nothing. I. I ascribed this to Mars, okay? But uh, Rahu and Ketu also will have some influence there because Rahu and Ketu are the extremes, right? They are extremes of the moon. If the moon is going, right? So the wobbles, north wobble is Rahu, yeah. south wobble is Ketu. So it's like extreme. If, for example, people who are terrorists, I have analyzed uh, the charts of terrorists, they will have Ketu very dominant because they are extreme Ketu. Of course, this Ketu has to be afflicted in a bed house, in a bed yoga, probably with Mars, connected to violence, right? Yes. But the extremes, right? So this is all or nothing. 
then overgeneralization, seeing in one event the pattern. So overgeneralization means, for example, I failed one time and then you say, oh, I'm a failure. Okay, <laughs> this is, this is overgeneralization. Seeing in one event the pattern. So I said Ketu and maybe Mars. Then this is very interesting, mental filter. <laughs> mental filter means exclusive dwellings on one negative event, which means that in the mental filter, we are, this is, this is all very connected, all these three, all or nothing, overgeneralization, mental filter. It means that your, your view is too <laughs> very, if you have a depression or anxiety, especially anxiety, what is the panic attack? Panic attack is the feeling of the threat, which is you feel like you are dying, there is the threat, right? And the, all the hormones of your body, they are producing the adrenaline, and uh, all the hormones are making your body very stiff, your muscles, you're ready to fight, right? And, and, and when, when uh, you are in that emotional state of panic, then also your uh, perspective is narrowing down because you have to be, you know, if someone is, is, is chasing you, if someone is running after you, then you need to be very focused, right? So this mental filter also, when you have in fear, when you are in depression, that it can also make that down. And Ketu, I have here written, written Ketu, but now after, I did it a few months back, but now after we fought, I would say that Mars is very good plan for that. Mars is making your filter down. Because my, uh, Ketu and Mars are like la laser. They are like laser. No? The Sun and Jupiter, they are sattva. So they are very wide, right? Even in Bhagavad Gita, there is a nice, very nice uh, shloka, which says that uh, in the Guna, in either 12, 13, 14, or 15 chapter, I don't remember now, but there is the shloka which says, person who treats the one work uh, as all, all in all, this is all in all, is in Tamas Guna. <laughs> okay, so if... This is very funny because people normally think that, ah, I'm passionate. Huh? If someone is treating one thing as everything, we romanticize it and we say, oh, you are very, you are a person of passion. Huh? But of if course. you don't have that broad view of life, yeah. that here is your family, here is your religion, here is Kama, Arta, uh, Moksha, Dharma, all the four Ayanas, and you are only focused on one thing all in all, then this is tamas guna, according to Krishna, at least. Huh? So this is also the mental filter. Then we have this disqualify the positive, ignoring the positive side. Again, Ketu. Jumping to conclusion. This is also a very interesting thing. Huh? Jumping to conclusion. Mind reading and fortune teller error. So this is based on these two other types. But basically, it means that if something happened to you, you are labeling yourself, right? You are jumping, for example, if someone um, uh, said that, oh, you have some blood, uh, bad blood results, then you may say, you, you are jumping very quickly to a wrong conclusion. You may say, oh, I may be ill, I may, be, may have some strong other issues. No? Then we have magnification, which is also catastrophizing. This is Rahu, right? <laughs> Rahu is the, if you have Rahu in Navamsha Lagna or in the Rashi Lagna, you may see a catastrophe. <laughs> you may see everything in the black colors, basically, right? Okay. Because Rahu is seeing too much. Here I have written Rahu seeing too much. Ketu is seeing too little. That is the difference. So therefore Ketu can ignore things and Rahu can first of all, obsess about things because Rahu is desire. And secondly, Rahu uh, sees things which are not there. For example, you may hypochondria. You think you are uh, diseased all the time. You fear you are dying. You fear you are ailing, but you are not. This is Rahu. Then we have emotional reasoning. This is also very, very nice. It shows that um, if you feel something, it must be right. This is wrong. For example, you may feel guilty for something because partner is making you guilty. But it's not true that you should feel like that. So your emotions may be very, 
bad tool for uh, judging what's going really happening. What is really happening? If you have a panic attack, you feel as if you are dying. You feel as if someone is chasing you, but it's not true. It's not true. So very often emotions are bad indicators of what's going on. If this, if this psychological mechanism is wrong, then the emotional uh, analysis be, be, will be also wrong. So this is something here I have written Saturn being the enemy of Jupiter and the cause of his debilitation cannot cross the emotional state to compare it with the conclusion of intelligence, which means that if you have too much suffering where the Saturn is too much, it debilitates the Jupiter and the Jupiter cannot judge things in a proper perspective. Then we have should statements that I should do something. This is sun uh, for discipline. Labeling and personalization. The labeling is also very in, uh, important. Labeling means that uh, for like the, I did failure and uh, I did uh, something bad, so I am a wrong person. This is labeling. You are, you are putting yourself into some, into some label, right? So these are basically um, the causes of wrong faults, which are leading to uh, depression, which are leading to anxiety and all that. Right? And um, let me see here. I have, uh, yeah. So I, 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 here I, I also made some information that notes, which are Rahu and Ketu, are showing errors, lack of balance, hallucinations, seeing too much, or blindness, no information, right? Rahu is no information, it's, it's natural badaka. Aquarius is natural badaka. And Prashna Marga says, what is badaka? Badaka is adrishya agantuka, something external and adrishya. You cannot see, drishya means visible, adrishya. I cannot see, I don't know what's going on. This is Rahu. Rahu is a fear, which fear of the unknown, fear of the unknown. I have a fear, I don't know what's on the other side. This is the Badaka. Badaka is like a, like a, like a border, like, a, like a, the wall, right? You don't know, you don't know. It's like in the night, in the night, everyone has a fear. We think that the pile of clothes on our chair is like uh, some monster, right? <laughs> but if we put the light on, if we turn the light on, oh, this is only my, my clothes, right? So this is Rahu. So, and this is the 11th house is the flip house because it has this Rahu unknown, but the Karaka of the 11th house is Jupiter. This is a very interesting house. 11th house is a very interesting house because the natural sign is Aquarius loaded by Rahu. But the Karaka is Jupiter, right? So this is the, the unknown, coming from the unknown to the knowledge, to the known. This is 11th house. Therefore, our body is coming from the 11th house. We are coming to this world in the 11th house and our mind comes in the 12th house. Now, Ketu shows ignoring things and re uh, repetitive actions as a habit. Yeah? So OCB, the, the obsessive compulsion disorder may come from Ketu because you are repeating the things all the time. The sun is causing atma issues. Mm, this is maybe something deep. Sun is atma karaka, the soul. The Mars is hastiness, doing something hasty, anger, and one pointedness, no? this mental filter, one thing. Saturn, of course, is a tamas gunagraha, darkness, laziness, emptiness, lack of knowledge, and inaction. Huh? Okay, so um, here I have given some, you can read that. I will not read the, everything. I will only say the most important thing here is that among the Kendra, among the Kendra houses, first, fourth, seven, and tenth, the fourth house is the house of mind, right? Cancer, it's yes. natural cancer. Correct. What house is the mind? Correct. But, but also third and, and fifth, okay? The third house is 12 from the fourth. So yes. it shows loss of mind. <laughs> Therefore, Parashara says that third house is Dushikya Bhava. Dushikya okay. means bad thoughts. So in the third okay. house, we have bad thoughts, okay? Okay. That force may come from Sangha. So the Sangha, whom you are, whom you are talking with, 
where is your gang? Where is your gang, right? Your gang is oh, the third. Okay. Therefore, third lord in the fifth house means that you are only with the intellectuals. If the third lord is in the fifth, you are only associating with intellectuals. No? Third lord in 12th house, uh, like Rama, only with the rishis. So Rama, Sri Ram was only with the rishis. Third lord in the 11th. No? So third house is Dushikya Bhava, right? And the fifth house is the protection of the mind because second house sustains the fourth. So second from the fourth, fifth house sustains the fourth, right? So this is mantra house, manas, traya. Manas, mind, traya, protection. So the fifth house is protecting your mind. The fourth house is your mind. And the third house is Dushikya Baba. So the shortcut for mental diseases, <laughs> mental challenges is that fourth house normally brings anxiety. Third house is showing depression. Fifth house can show psychosis and serious problems, okay? This is nice, nice, interesting categorization. Also here in the last paragraph, I have made this uh, important thing that the Lagna Lord, the Ascendant Lord, if afflicted, it brings cognitive type of problems like ADHD, schizophrenia, autism, and uh, Asperger's, all these issues related to learning, how you see the world, how you learn, all these cognitive abilities. If you have problems there, the Lagna Lord, Ascendant Lord must be afflicted, okay? And, and on the other way, if your Ascendant Lord is strong, then your learning is good because Ascendant Lord shows how you are using your computer. <laughs> you have computer here, this is the Lagna Ascendant, yeah, the Lord shows how you are using this. Yeah. So this is the Lagna Lord uh, importance and the third, first, fourth, and fifth. Huh? Okay, so having these, again, we, we have some theory. Now we will try to see this theory on three charts very quickly. We will do that and see how we can judge these wrongful patterns, right? Here we have the, the patterns which are problematic and uh, we will try to, we ascribed all these problematic thinking patterns to planets. Now we will see how this will work, how we can use that. Okay, so in this chart, we see that uh, what we can say, aha. Uh -huh. That the first, uh, third house in this chart is a Leo, and third from Mars is Aquarius. We also see, I, I didn't mention that, we also see the third from Mars. This is also important indicator for how your uh, mind is working. Third from Mars, interesting point in the chart. <laughs> okay, so here we have third from Mars is Aquarius, loaded by Rahu. Okay, we have Rahu. Third lord from the Lagna is the Sun. Based on the Navamsha, Mars is a better candidate for causing distortive thoughts. And Mars is. So in the Navamsha, in the Navamsha, we have seen that this Mars is more problematic here. So we have basically Rahu here in the Lagna is good, by, but this is aspected by Mars. Okay. So going back the steps, first we take third from Asanan and third from Mars. Third from Mars was Rahu. Rahu is exalted in Lagna, not so bad, but this is aspected by the Mars. This is the problem. The aspect of Mars is the problem, right? And based, uh, and then because we ascribed Mars to these uh, wrongful thinking, we can say that this native is now suffering from all or nothing, overgeneralization, jumping to conclusion, shoot statements, and labeling, <laughs> okay? Because previously we ascribed that Mars will give these issues. Yeah? So yeah. if we know that, this is, this is very interesting because now we are diag diagnosed, diagnosing the person based on, the, uh, based on these things which the, uh, David Burns in this book brought. Yeah? We ascribe to planet, now we found the planet, and now we are going back, we can say, oh, all or nothing, overgeneralization. First, 
Mars, Mars means you are very hasty because Mars is quickly, fast, right? So you are jumping to conclusions too fast. Yeah? You are having this all or nothing thinking. You are over -general generalizing. you are labeling, okay? All these, and then you can, using this, uh, using this, uh, ascribing these planets to these, uh, to these patterns, you can then, uh, first of all, uh, make a diagnosis that this is the problem, but also then you can do a remedy, right? We know, okay, this Mars is a problem. So we can say, oh, maybe you will do some Rudra mantra. Maybe you will do some Ganesha mantra because it's a Pisacha Yoga, Ketu Mars. Uchishta Ganeshaya Hasti Pisachi Rikesvaha. Maybe this mantra will be very good for a Uchista Ganesha. And then we know, and we can go also from the other side. If we know that the person is suffering with these issues, like here, like jumping to conclusion too quickly, then we know, oh, this is Mars. Okay, now Mars is speaking, right? Yeah. If you are jumping to conclusion too quickly, you are labeling, you are thinking in terms of all or nothing. Okay, this is Mars speaking. Let me do a remedy for that Mars. Let me give a mantra which is related to that Mars yoga. In this case, Uchista Ganeshaya. If I will do the Uchista Ganeshaya, the client, if the person will do, then he will go out of this problem, right? So that was the thing, uh, the first. In this example, we see that Jupiter, the third Lord, we again take the third Lord and the fourth house. We see here Jupiter and Mercury, right? The third and fourth. And we also see that the dispositor of that is the Saturn with the debilitated moon. And third from Mars is the moon, because here is the Taurus, Taurus is loaded by the moon. So here we see that, oh, yeah, this moon, Saturn, Mercury, Jupiter, this is uh, connected. No? Then we also see Lagna Lord is Venus with the Mars. Aspected, uh, it's not aspected by Rahu, but it's Kartari of Rahu. So we have Saturn, Kartari on Lagna, Mars and Rahu, and Mars is with Lagnesha and with the third from the Mars. So the Venus and Mars here is problematic. Now, this is a little bit other thing here because here the Lagna Lord is in Dushtana, right? Lagna Lord is Venus, this is Libra. It's in the sixth house, Dushtana. So when Lagna Lord is in Dushtana, you may have depression due to the wrong thoughts. So this is exactly the cognitive therapy patient. Basically, it means that you are axing your own legs. You're thinking, you're thinking wrongly all the time. Lagna Lord, your thinking is wrong. It's in Dushtana, right? And now we can say, what type of problem is that? Here we see Mars. Mars is Danda, right? Danda. You have the Sama, which is the being peaceful. Then you have Dana, uh, giving something, right? Then you have doing the manipulation. This is Rahu Saturn, manipulation. And Sun, Mars, Ketu, Danda, fight, right? <laughs> so Lagna Lord in sixth, wrong thinking, but you are doing Danda. So what it means? You are blaming yourself. You are punishing yourself all the time. Okay. So this person has a problem with all the time blaming herself, punishing herself, always doing Danda on the Lagna Lord. This is on self. So Danda on the self, right? This is especially the sixth house which have to do with a punishment. So she's punishing herself. And here I have labeled all or nothing, over generalized. This is also Mars. But here we also have the Saturn because the moon, which is showing your psychological uh, frame, is with the Saturn, right? So this is the emotional reasoning, maybe the problem. And disqualify the positive, right? You, you remember one of the problem one of these uh, patterns was uh, where it was disqualified the positive. Uh, I think this is in the emotional. No, here, the one, two, three, four. You see, the four type is disqualified the positive. And this is Saturnian or Rahu. It means that you are seeing things in negative way all the time. You are not seeing the good things. No? We, you could say this is the seeing the glass uh, half empty, not okay. half full, right? But half empty. So this is the disqualified, the positive. This is the Saturn thing. 
So here we see that this lady, she has two things. One thing was that Mars and Venus blaming herself, wrong thoughts, but Moon is also with Saturn. This can give the disqualified the positive. Now the last chart here, right? Is it, yeah. This is the last in this uh, topic. Here we have third from Lagna is the Moon. So again, we take the third for depression, for the problems with the mind. This is with Saturn in the fifth. Yeah. And uh, here we see that Sun being also at Makaraka indicates jumping to conclusions, shoot statement, personalization, and the Mars part will bring again this all or nothing of generalization and so on. So we see that in this chart, again, fourth and fifth are very afflicted. In fourth, we have curse of Jupiter. Wow, Jupiter is with Mars and Raku. And you see there is a Graha Malika Yoga, Jupiter in fourth, Moon in fifth, Sun in sixth, Mercury in seventh. This is Graha Malika Yoga, right? Four planets in the garland. Malika is a garland, Graha of planets, garland of planets. From fourth house of your mind, right? And the third Lord, Moon, in the fifth house is with Saturn again. So Moon and Saturn. And the fourth house, here the, I would say this chart is anxiety type of problem because Jupiter and Rahu brings fear and fourth house is afflicted. So Jupiter and Rahu in fourth, this is anxiety. Also trust issues because fourth house is the house where the Kapata yoga can happen. If you have malefic in fourth, you have trust issues because someone will cheat you, right? Kapata yoga, malefic in fourth, someone will cheat you. Be careful, especially Rahu. Uh, Saturn, and so on. Okay, so that was the point. That was my experiment. Okay, write me in the comments what do you think about, do you have any other suggestion for uh, these points? All or nothing, what it can be? Babajit, what do you think? All or nothing, could it be Rahu? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Mars is primarily involved with it. Uh, at the same time, I have seen uh, if the Lagna Lord is sometimes afflicted but exalted, then also this happens. Okay, I know it and nothing else is required because I'm the boss. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes Maybe I've also the it. sun being a, being a stubborn? What yeah. do you think? Yeah, yeah, even I have seen if sometimes the Lagna Lord is debilitated and afflicted, even then this happens, I've seen. Because then you're like, I can't see anything else because I feel, because for exaltation, it happens differently. They can be too overconfident sometimes, but for debilitation, it's like they know that what they think is not right. So they are trying to compensate it by, you know, showing externally too many reasons why they think they're right or they're wrong. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So two extremes, debilitated and exalted. Right, right. Yeah. They behave similar, but the 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 inherent uh, disposition is different. Although they are externally looking the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, with sun also this can happen. I've seen, and also if uh, if the Atmakaraka is linked with sun and Mars, then also I have seen this happening. And with over generalization. Um, Sometimes I've seen uh, if Jupiter is not that great, then also this can happen because then they might, uh, they might, as they say, uh, you should be open minded, but not so much that the mind itself falls out. <laughs> <laughs> great, yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, it's like overly generalizing something because they are not uh, aware of the correct path. That is why, you know, oh, maybe this is also correct, that is also correct, you know, so, but then what what works ultimately that's something which they can't say yeah so these are pretty uh, valid uh, what about this disqualify the positive that would be saturn right being a little bit pessimistic a little bit negative you are not seeing the positive side is that rahu is that saturn what would you say yeah that, that that's typical saturn saturn moon i have seen and also I have seen somehow uh, the sixth house being very important because why, why I'm saying sixth house because um, the sixth house is the 12th from the seventh. So sixth house people who have a very strong sixth house have a very strong, uh, they can have this behavior sometimes of disagreeing too much beyond what is required. 
so they can uh, so they can sometimes be uh, bringing that trait within themselves also okay yes i disagree with this i disagree with that ah rebels this, rebels yeah this is not right that's not right you know because seventh house if you see from a business perspective or from a negotiation or marriage perspective you know it's like you are agreeing with somebody or you are coming into a negotiation but the sixth house is the which breaks that negotiation so it's yeah. like no i am awesome. only right yeah, i i am only right uh, no uh, i don't think this is right so this i have seen uh, disqualifying the positive sometimes yeah ignoring the positive of course this has to be there you know in in a bad shape the sixth lot can go be afflicted or debilitated planet in the sixth like as you showed venus in the sixth for a libra like then this could happen i have seen and jumping into conclusion uh, yes this i have seen if somehow moon rahu moon mars they are somehow linked you know, because then they are like quick and they are like okay i think this is uh, this is right and with sun i have seen it can give a very uh, bit of a judgmental behavior i think oh yeah yeah he is like this she is like that he will yeah, judgmental really yeah i am the king judging yeah. you right <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> exactly exactly yeah magnification i have seen uh, you know this um, i have seen moon rahu of course but i have seen somehow neptune also involved in all this although we are talking of vedic astrology but i have seen neptune is very much involved and of course i mean uh, if malefics are there in the 4th 8th and 12th then i have seen this happening you know, magnifying things you know, like oh interesting okay why in kendra what we what would you say kendra 4th and 10th kendra i have seen if they could give you obstacles but if it is in the moksha houses you know 4th 8th 12th then i have uh -huh, seen 4th 8th 12th okay mm -hmm. yeah then then i have seen that things appear more bloated than it is are actually interesting for, okay so for example i have seen moon in the 8th people of course this is not a generalization again but what i have seen in my experience if other combinations are working then moon in the eighth it's like uh, something happens externally and that's they sink into it totally you know? it's like they're not able to come out of it you know it's like true true yeah 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 they will think of all the eight yeah because like a well right you are falling into the into the yeah, yeah it's like they will think this is the end of the world and um, they can forget wholeness sometimes they could be too much obsessed with one thing you know it's like okay i had a breakup uh, or my marriage didn't work so i will only focus on career it's like all energies are dump into career you know all the 10th house work and then suddenly you in your workplace you fall in love with somebody then you suddenly forget all your work you know you are all yeah. the time you know, fantasizing and thinking of affairs and all this so yeah it's yeah, like yeah. anything which is there it's magnified i've seen yeah and yeah eighth house mm -hmm. emotional reasoning hmm. this i have seen if uh jupiter is not well placed then this happens that this is this is very true you know? shani being the enemy of jupiter yes this is correct this is i i i see this more of a you know lack of judgment so this is like uh they they can sometimes uh they can sometimes become so emotional that uh, their intelligence is as the lord krishna says in the gita no? the intelligence is the controller of the mind so therefore if the intelligence is not strong then negative emotions can overpower very rarely does it happen that good emotions will you know over overpower our intelligence very rarely it happens interesting But, point yeah weak weak jupiter or afflicted jupiter i have seen and yes 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 good 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 mm -hmm. and should should good statements this Yeah, like you should do something you know like you are blaming yourself i should do this i should be better i should do it earlier yeah, you know people are blaming sun, yourself sun and ascendant ascendant lord if they are badly placed then this happens yeah sun mm -hmm. true labeling hastiness mark personalization you see as cause of external event yes this also yeah. happens i i think uh, primarily the malefics are involved in all of this Yeah. <laughs> this would this would be a nice job, né, to have a good conclusion of this yes. and then use this to help people. I I found this really uh, very useful because there is a whole school of this cognitive psychologists which are using just that list 
to uh, really help people. No? There is all, also, if you, if you see this uh, guy, uh, David Burns, if you are interested in his uh, way of uh, mood therapy, as he calls it, he has the podcast on, or, or also for uh, viewers, for uh, you people, <laughs> this, uh, this feeling good. There is a podcast on Spotify for free when he is discussing the specific examples of people and with, with this list, and he's helping people with this list. Uh, so this is very, very interesting, yeah. On Spotify, you can find him and his podcast, and you can study that further, how he's helping people with such things. So the last thing uh, would be the uh, mental challenges. And I have, especially because we have, we have depression, right? There are many mental challenges. There is the um, the obsessive compulsive disorder, there's depression, bipolar, anxiety, fears, many, many things, but uh, not so much uh, was said about the ADHD. <laughs> so I thought that I will speak a little bit about that topic. And uh, what is ADHD? It's basically the uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, right? So it means this ADHD, especially when we are talking about then, then the, 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 the bias says that it's only about children, but it's not true. Many of adults also have that, okay? So this is very, also very common cognitive challenge, I would call it cognitive challenge. I would not call it some mental disease or anything like that. I would call it the uh, cognitive challenge or even some people are saying that this is something like a normative view of the world. You are looking at the world in a normative way, which means not, not the default, not like major of people, but you have your own type of uh, perceiving the world, own perception, which, which is not worse, which is not worse. It's equally good, but different. Some people are saying ADHD could be seen in this perspective. So uh, there are basically four types also of ADHD, depending which factor is more strong. Some people are having more attention deficit. They cannot sustain attention for a long time, right? They are reading the book. Now in the, in the era of uh, phones, everyone has this problem. We are... Uh, you have to, like, if you do a YouTube video, you need, you need to quickly, fast say something because the people are only looking for one minute and then they are going away. So we, we cannot read the book now. The books, people are not reading books with, because they don't have the attention uh, which is demanded for that. So, so one thing is the attention. The kids, when, when the kids have this, they cannot sustain 45 minutes the lesson is going on they after five minutes they are somewhere else all over the place they cannot focus basically so the first part is the problem with the focus and uh, a psychologist says that especially the ladies the ladies they have more this attention problem the second part of adhd is the impulsivity Person, people who are having this adhd they are very impulsive and men they they, they said some uh, they, they did some studies and they concluded that the men are more into the type of being more impulsive. No? So there is this, I have written here, how we can ascribe again these two planets. So this, is, this can be useful for astrology. The impulsivity, being impulsive, being fast, going very quick. The mind of people with ADHD, very fast, very fast, okay? And they not only fast in thinking, but also fast in moving. The whole motor, motor of the body is also, everything is moving. So this is Mars and Ketu. Interestingly, <laughs> this is also Pisacha Yoga, right? You are haunted okay. by ghosts, Mars and Ketu. Interesting, okay? So when Sanjay Ji was teaching about Mars and Ketu, he said, person is dancing all the time. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. If you have Mars and Ketu, you are, you cannot relax. Oh, you okay. like to walk in the night. People with Mars and Ketu, they like to be awake in the night. They are always moving, always dancing, okay? And this definitely can give this uh, uh, impulse 
character, this can, eh? especially if it is now the, the, the factor, if it is related to the Lagna Lord, to the Ascendant Lord, then this is your cognitive challenge. Then it is a problem for your cognitive function. If this is related to the moon or Lord of the moon, this is also your psychological challenge. Okay, so only then this Mars and Ketu will influence your thinking, your thoughts, and so on. Then we have the hyper focus. Now, this is interesting. Uh, not many people know this. They are also good points of ADHD, of having ADHD. This is one of them hyper focus. These people, when they like something, <laughs> they can for hours. For hours, they are in the trance mode, trance, very immersed. They are totally immersed in the subject. This is also Mars and Ketu, okay? Now, weak structure. These people with ADHD, they are very, the structure, following some steps, like you first have to do this, then this, then this. This is very challenging for them. Uh, then we have the uh, attention, we said, no? Uh, they are in their own world, right? This is similar a little bit to autism. Uh, they are in their own world. So the Rikta Titi, this can be studied a little bit in this context. What is Rikta Titi? Chatur, uh, Chaturti, fort. Uh, uh, then the Krishna Navami and, Krish, and uh, Chaturdasi. So Chaturti, Navami, Chaturdasi. This is problematic Titi. Also for Mukurta, for starting something new. The Chaturti remedied by Ganesha, Navami by Rama or Durga, and uh, Chaturdasi, of course, by, by Shiva. Uh, Shiva Chaturdashi. So these are the remedies. If you are born on, Rama, uh, on um, Navami, like Sri Ram, then you should worship Durga, right? If Chaturdasi, you should worship Ganesha. If on Chaturdashi, the remedy is Shiva. So Already we have remedies. If you, if you are born in these TTs and you are, you are being challenged on these, uh, in these topics, you can do these remedies, right? Now, um, also very interesting trait of people with ADHD is that they are mixing things. Hmm? <laughs> this is okay. Raku. And why they are mixing things? Because also Sanjayji was one, once uh, one nicely describing this trait of Raku. <laughs> that you are doing some cooking, right? You are doing some cooking, then you are thinking, then you are checking your phone, right? <laughs> because Rahu has 10 heads, like, like, a, like, a, the, 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 like Durga has 10 heads, right? And therefore they can do many things at once. If you have strong Rahu and this Rahu is related to your Lagna, to your characteristics of your thinking, you can, be, you can do many things at once. So on the negative side, this can give someone who is mixing things. They, chaos. Rahu, when Rahu is with Mercury, this is Niriti Yoga. Person lives in the chaos, chaotic life, okay? <laughs> but on the good point, if the Rahu is positive, it gives researcher and innovator, pioneer, someone who is starting something. If you have Rahu in the Trikona 2, Navam Shalagna, you are pioneer, you are innovator, you are starting something new, right? This is the Rahu. So, this mixing pen can be good or bad, but basically in the ADHD, this mixing is coming because you are not following the pattern. You are not, uh, you are not in one step. First, we have to do this. Then we have to do this. If you have strong sun, then you have a good structure. Uh, you have no problem with discipline. You are a very regular person. You can do a sadhana in Aisni. Every day you are waking up at the same. Eh? If you have sun in Lagna, very nice sun, this gives you this sattva guna thing. Eh? Because this is part of sattva guna. Discipline is sattva guna thing. So if you don't have this structure, then it's very easy to, <laughs> you, are, you are going like a, like a alcohol, like a driver under influence, right? Yeah. Yes. Right? So therefore you are mixing a little bit. For example, let's say we are doing now the lecture, né? but I will now start telling you about some new applications or something. And then because I cannot follow this uh, structure, we are moving from here. To, this is mixing. It can be good and bad. If it's bad Rahu, 
it brings problems. If it's strong Rahu, like in seventh house, Rahu has directional strength, Digbala, it can bless you. Yeah? And now the psych, ah, this is, a, this is an interesting topic here. Moon dispositor, right? Because um, probably you know, in the psychology, in the, in the psychology school, there are people like psychiatrists which says that you can only heal yourself by taking medicine, by taking pills. They say that psychology has no sense. You cannot be cured by psychology. It's everything in the brain. Your brain, if you have depression, if you have anxiety, it's all in the brain. The, the biology of the brain, the, the chemistry of the brain is flawed. And therefore you need a pill, you need antidepressants. No? This is the psychiatrist school which is against the psychology i mean this is extreme they are of course the, the 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 different approach but if it is in the brain because they were studies which were really um confirming that people with adhd their uh, chemistry of the brain is different for example they said that the serotonin in the neurons is a little bit lower therefore they don't have that peace they are not at peace they have to always move because the serotonin, which is responsible for your peace, is a little bit too low. And I, I picked that because your brain is loaded by the moon and its dispositor. So if there is some problem in your brain, then the, there has to be affliction to these. Yeah? So this we also need to check. But primarily, we need to check again Ascendant Lord, because this shows how the cognitive skills you are. Then I said here a little bit about the remedies for ADHD, what we can do, how we can, because probably 20% of viewers or in some point of time, they may be challenged with similar problems, okay? So uh, first thing we, which we need to uh, bring is meditation. Meditation is very good because it will bring the ojas, sattva, prana, whatever you will call it. Nah? In the yoga <laughs> scene, you can call it prana. In the religious, you can call it sattva. In the Ayurveda, you can call it ojas. It's the, it's the same thing. It's some kind of sattvic uh, uh, state of mind which makes you at peace. You don't need to run anywhere. You are just sitting all the time. You are happy. This is Sattva Guna. This comes from a lot of meditation. If you do a lot of meditation, you are like, ah, like hugging yourself. I'm fine. Everything is cool. The happiness is, is, is coming from within. It's, it's Antar, Antar Sukha, coming from within. You can have Bakir Sukha, happiness from Rajas Guna, from your senses, but this is Antar Sukha, the inner happiness. So because they said, that ADHD people don't have that peace, don't have that satisfaction, they should meditate more. <laughs> this is very interesting. This is coming from psychologists. People who are in psychologist uh, scene, they are saying that, um, that you should um, take care for yourself. You should relax more. You should read a book. You should do more self-care like caring for yourself more, if you have the ADHD. This is because these people don't have this serotonin, this, I call it the prana odas or sattva in the mind. This is a little bit lower. Maybe the Jupiter and the moon and the sun will be nushtana for these people. We will see one example of that, okay? So meditation will bring that. Maybe also pranayam, right? Pranayam also yes, brings prana. Definitely. Maybe also pranayam. But I would say that pranayama is more, it has this fiery, think especially if you do the kumbhaka the the retention of breath yeah. right then the agni is uh, going up a little bit so this is a little bit fiery maybe fiery but if you do of course this nabi shodana when the exhalation is very longer than inhalation this is bringing the chandra energy right you are at peace even you know when you have a, a panic attack the main remedy for panic attack is to you have to inhale for three seconds and then exhale longer, like six seconds. Because okay. then you are like, ah, oh, you are the Chandra comes, cooling, mm -hmm. right? The energy of, of moon. You are cooling down. You are going into away from the fight or flight mode. This is the way to, 
panic attack. So this also, this meditation brings that. Then here, this too, appreciation of the nuanced happiness of Sattva Guna <laughs> and also the Shreya. So what is Shreya? In Upanishads, we are told that there is a Shreya and Preya. So Preya means doing something for quick, quick results. But Shreya means uh, doing something for longer. Huh? This is, if you read the Gita, there, also there is a shloka which says that the happiness, which is very nice at the beginning, but then it's yeah. bitter at the end, is rajas, right? Yes. <laughs> Tamas is no happiness at the beginning, at the end, no happiness, like being a drug addict. You are, no happiness is there. But if you, but sattva is bitter at the beginning. It's a problematic Correct. at the beginning, like a discipline, like mantras, right? Or, or overcoming your comforts. Going, uh, overcoming your comfort zone. This can also be sattva because at the beginning it's all, oh, I fear it's problematic, but then the happiness comes slowly. Huh? Like also there is the saying that uh, if you want to be happy for a long time, then uh, make a garden. <laughs> Why? Because every day you are gardening, doing something, and then after a long time, the results comes. Like doing the mantra, you're doing the austerity tapasya for a long time. And then after some time comes the, the results. So this is the sattva guna. And because the people with ADHD, they are always in the presence. They always, they want to taste the presence a lot. Therefore, the sattva is lacking. No? So this knowledge about this shreya, about this, I called it, nuanced happiness of sattva <laughs> because the sattva is not so much like rajas the rajas is very obvious and very um very raw and very tangible you can touch the happiness like you eat some of the rajas or party right but the sattva is nuanced it's 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 like shimmering fire a little bit but it's for a long time it's very satisfying very deep coaching support this is other remedy for adhd you need to have some support, some coach, maybe girlfriend, maybe boyfriend, maybe father. These people need support. They need someone they speak to and they need to do things in steps. Timer and calendar. This is very important, very practical. If you have ADHD or any problems like that, you need to buy yourself a timer <laughs> and do the things like in 25 <laughs> minutes okay. and calendar. So you always know, ah, tomorrow I have this. Because people with ADHD, they don't have, the sense of time is very warped. The sense of time is very warped. So timer and calendar, and of course, the structure. This is very important slide. This is last but one. Then we have the example, and that's it. <laughs> uh, so the last slide, um, this is coming from Sanjay Rath. He said that if you have any mental problem, any challenge, then the ninth from moon is the kavacha to that. Okay, kavacha, which means protection. So I thought, hmm, okay, does that mean that this ninth from moon can show you a type of therapy? Yes. No. Very interesting point. Can I use this point in the chart for myself, for clients, for my friends, Yes. And tell them what they should do to protect, uh, to protect myself from Correct. problem. I have given one example because I have moon in Capricorn and ninth from Capricorn is Virgo. And I, in Virgo, I have this Mercury. So journaling, writing. I've seen that if I have some problems, everyone has problems. <laughs> then when I write something, write down. This is called a journaling therapy. This is one of therapy. You can write down things to have more clarity of the mind, to let the emotions go, many things. So for me, for myself, writing may, does wonder, okay? For me, writing is everything when it comes to therapy. I don't know why. It's, it's, this, is my, this is how my mind is made, okay? So see your ninth from the moon. See what you have there. Maybe if you have the Vayu Grahas like Rahu and Saturn, maybe Pranayama would be very good. No? Maybe walking. No? Vayu, Vayu, walking, some change, some air, getting air, right? 
So depending on, on that, you can use the house and the planet to protect your soul. This is very easy, maybe. Someone will say, ah, ah this is too easy. It has to be some Trim Shamsa, Shastyamsa, some D27. <laughs> it has to be some... <laughs> but this is very easy. But from Rashi, this is showing our, how our physical mind is brain, because Rashi is very physical. But I've seen that this is a very nice uh, point. This nine from moon, do it. This, this also controls our focus. If we can focus and uh, on what things we are focusing. That's why I have given here examples. If, if there is a Venus, also Shubapati, the dispositor of, of moon. If it's Venus, then the chemicals can work for you. Maybe the pills then work for you. Hmm? This may be for someone, what this guy is saying, he's astrologer, he should be promoting Ayurveda. No, no, no. The remedy is remedy. Eh? You may have karma, which says that the chemicals can work for you. This is when, when Shubapati is Venus. Or I have also seen like uh, so all these uh, scented oils, they also work if Venus is there in the ninth from moon. Or, you know, this fragrant yes. candles, they also work. Exactly. Oils, oils, yeah, yes. perfectly. Yes. Good point. And moon with Ketu in Dinamamsha. <laughs> if you have moon and with Ketu in Dinamamsha, then meditation will uh, also improve your physical health. Okay, so knowing that, knowing that, let me analyze this last chart of De Chanel Zui. Uh, probably also pronunciation is wrong. <laughs> She was the American actor, singer, songwriter, musician, and producer. She is. She is the daughter of a cinematographer and an actress, younger sister of actress Emily D. Chanel. Okay. So, 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 so. On first glance, I was thinking, okay, Lagna Lord, what is that? Capricorn. Lagna Lord is Saturn because the Capricorn is loaded by Saturn in the ninth house. Fine. What's the problem? And the ninth Lord... Mercury, oh, it's in Capricorn. This looks like Parivartana, right? Parivartana Yoga. Lagna Lord and Ninth, Ninth Lord in the Lagna. What would you say? Ninth Lord with the Sun in the Lagna. Oh my God, the Father is very important for her, right? Ninth Lord, Father, and the Sun in the Lagna. Father's on the head, right? And it's true, no? she is Mother, daughter. Like, controls all the life decisions. Exactly, exactly. She is the daughter of a cinematographer and actress. So, so the, the inheritance thing, because it's also Saturn. Saturn is the Karaka for inheritance. So the Lagnal or the father is very close. She is very closely connected to the father. But now, <laughs> the thing is that it's like a Mercury being in own sign. When Mercury is in the own sign, it can give results of uh, Rahu. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so now we have connection to the eighth house. Okay, this is not so obvious. Normally, by this chart, you would say no ADHD, no problem. Where is the problem? Lagna Lord in ninth? Come on. Uh, Sun and Mercury, this is like Nipuna Yoga or uh, uh, Surya Aditya Yoga, giving brilliance, giving intelligence in the Lagna. It's no problem, right? But because of that, Parivartana is like Mercury in the own sign and Mercury in the own sign gives residence of Rahu and now we are going to the problem, okay? So I told you that this lack of peace, lack of satisfaction in life may come from Satvik Grahas, Moon, Jupiter, and Sun in the 6, 8, or 12. Yes. yes. Right? So here we have Moon in 12 and Jupiter in 8. Oh, so this per person may be a little bit, you know, irritated all the time, not, not feeling at ease. There Correct. is no inner comfort. Like, it's not, not happy by just living, just enjoy the world. You know, like you have this benefit in Kendra, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Moon in Kendra. You are like happy go lucky. The world is beautiful. Everything is nice. But this Jupiter is in Dushtana. And with Rahu and Mars, okay? So Parashara says that if Jupiter is in Dushtana and Vakri, retrograde, and with Malefics, this is like biggest curse. Biggest curse. Oh. There is no bigger curse than Jupiter in six or eight, Vakri, 
afflicted. This is the worst. You can, you can, it's a, it's a real um, wonder that she is alive. Huh? Then there is another rule which says that if you will conquer that, then maybe you will be very strong because this curse normally, they say no remedies for that, no remedy. This is the only curse for which there is no remedy. Huh? So can be difficult and the, we have this connection to this yoga, to the Lagna Lord, because of this Parivartana and Mercury connected to the Rahu. So now this person, Zui Deschanel, was suffering from ADHD. Okay? So Jupiter in 8, Moon in the 12th. Also, the Shubhapati, this is a very important point, which I mentioned before. Dispositor of the Moon controls also the health of the person. Okay? A physical, uh, mental health. And also the 12th Lord controls also your mental health. This is maybe something new for you, okay? 12th Lord and dispositor of the moon. Because the moon, the Chandra was born in the ocean, okay? According to Indian mythology, uh -huh. the Chandra was born in the ocean. Ocean is the Pisces, the head. Our mental health is in 12th house. So now this becomes very clear. 12th Lord and dispositor of the moon in the eighth house with Rahu and Mars, okay? Therefore, we have the Sattva in Dushtana, we have Lagna Lord connected to the affliction, and we have Moon Dispositor and 12th Lord Dispositor connected to that. The yoga is complete. This can give ADHD, okay? Now, we would give some Dakshinamurti mantra for this person probably, right? To this, this affliction demands Dakshinamurti Shiva mantra. Okay, thank you, Babajit. That was the last slide. We did that. <laughs> Two hours. Okay, this is my YouTube people. If you want to subscribe, Rafael Gendash, I'm doing live free readings there every week. Uh, so if you want to be notified, this is my Instagram. So that's it. <laughs> you could uh, stop the screen share, maybe. Yeah. Stop sharing. Yeah. Yeah. So it was an amazing session. But what I wanted to tell here, everybody, was that I've had many interviews. I've interviewed many people. I have myself given many interviews. But those were always, you know, very much astrology centric from the last four years. Okay. But today was the first time, I think. <laughs> yeah, we've had some Ayurveda interviews earlier, but not so much in detail. But this was the first time, I think, uh, myself and all the viewers, we have witnessed this psychology thing coming. And it's not some fancy concepts, which he explained. Uh, you have very beautifully explained every trait with every planet. And then you have also explained with the whole school. So that's an incredible piece of art. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amajit. Thank you very much, very much, very much. I think this is just a new beginning and this has opened doors to yeah. so many things which are there actually in psychology, in psychiatry. And recently, this is the last thing I will say, I was in New Delhi, India. So then, uh, there also I had recorded some session, sessions with Nitin Kashyapji. Now, uh, with him also, we, we just discussed some basics of, you know, psychiatry and uh, not psychiatry, but astrology linked with psychiatry and some psychology. So, and in fact, I was telling my friends also that, that uh, yeah, it was nice if we could explore. And then when I had mailed uh, Rafal about the topic, then uh, he sent me the mail back that we want to make it on psychology. I was like, wow, that's it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you must have some karma now, eh? connected. The topics are coming. Yeah, yeah, incredible that is. It's like uh, we, we just uh, flow with the energy, whatever the whatever is there, uh, depending on the planets and all the stuff. We just flow. Anyways, thank you very much. And lastly, if uh, you are new and you have not subscribed to this channel or his channel, then please subscribe to it, and uh, you will find the link to his website and his youtube and instagram down in the description section so once again thank you Rafael. thank you very much thank you babajit for having me it was a pleasure and honor thank you yes yes see you in berlin soon yeah see you in berlin